Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. We have a uh, very special speaker with us today. Hi. Jordan Kravitz. And uh, she's going to speak to us about communicating with teens. Uh, how many people out there have teens in their lives? Ooh. We had them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we usually try to keep them uh, undercover. <laughs> but um, uh, Jordan's been working on this presentation. We talked about it probably about six months ago, and she started working on it right away, and uh, she got more excited about it, and so did I as we got closer. And um, Jordan plans on going to the University of Michigan by the time she graduates, it'll probably be about a million dollars a year. <laughs> so it'll be a basket at the back door. <laughs> but anyway, okay, Jordan, it's all yours. Okay. We encourage you to ask questions, participate, and if you have any problems hearing or understanding, just raise your hand. Okay, so I think the first thing you need to understand is that the biggest thing in a teenager's life it's like the most important thing in the world. <laughs> it's like not even their friends anymore because they have more friends in here than they actually talk to. It's really sad, but it's true. So if you have trouble keeping in touch with the teens in your family, the three easiest ways to communicate with them that they're most comfortable with is texting, Instagram, and FaceTime. Phone was created for phone calls, but texting is so much easier and faster. You can say what you want and instantly send it to someone. So this is what, um, on your devices, that's what the messages app is going to look like. You can add what's called emojis to your texts, like smiley faces and silly cartoon pictures. These help add emotions and make it fun. An example of a conversation I was having <coughs> with my friend Riley, and we were using emojis to show what we meant and what was going on. One of the coolest things about texting is that you can send pictures. You can easily share with someone what you're doing and you can show them too. Texts are all about communication, and pictures take communication to an entirely new level. So this is an example of me talking to my counselor from camp, and I was asking her a question, and I sent her a picture to go with it so that she could see what I meant. The final piece of texting is the hardest to learn. It's also used the most, and we refer to it as text language. Um, here are some examples. And then that's me and my friend Jonah. Um, so, any questions about texting? Pretty straightforward. Yeah? Uh, Jordan, you want to hear? Jordan, <coughs> how do you, can you send a, I can text and I can send a picture, mm -hmm. but I have trouble in the same text message doing both. Okay, I can, we're going to actually, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to do some live texting and FaceTiming to my friends. So I can show you guys how to do that afterwards. Did you show us how to text two people at the same time? Or yeah, the message? agree message, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh-huh. Guys, you, you mentioned that uh, the last uh, skill, which is the language, is the harder. How do you begin to learn? <laughs> <laughs> you have to be a teenager. <laughs>
did that work well. And I said, well, we can just use lots of rows, lots of blocks. And I said, no, it can't mean that. And you just showed it up there. Yeah. Not that loud. Not that loud. There are lots of social media sites out there that kids and teens are taking over. One of the biggest teen-based sites is Instagram. It's run by Facebook, and it helps kids near and far keep in touch. Here's a picture that I posted a while ago. Um, you can't see it up there, but the caption says, I miss you guys already. And it got cut off, but underneath it, a whole bunch of my teammates from my softball team commented, and they were like, able to have a conversation just because of one picture. There's a setting to make any accounts on Instagram private so that people can't see your posts without your permission. When, I can show you guys how to do this after, but you would go to um, your profile, then you click edit profile, and if you scroll to the bottom, you can turn on the switch that means posts are private. So that means that anybody you don't know can't follow you and see anything, any of your pictures until you say it's okay. On Instagram, you can post pictures and like and comment on other people's pictures. In order to see people's posts, though, you must be following them. So the green bar that says following shows that I'm following my friend Riley. But this girl, because the bar is white and it says follow, I'm not following her. And she's private, like it says right there. It says this user is private, so I can't see any of her pictures. One of the newer effects on Instagram is direct messaging. You can send pictures to certain people so that only they can see it. Um, I set Instagram up so that it sends me push notifications. So this is what it looked like on my lock screen when my friend Jonah sent me a picture. And then when you go into the app, there's a little box in the corner with the one on it. So that's how I know that's where I can click on it. And if I click on that, then it takes me to the direct messaging place. And if I click on where it says um, the photo, then it'll take me to the picture that he sent me. You can tag people in photos so that only they can see it, or so that they can see that you posted a picture of them. You can also tag people in comments if they didn't post something and you want to talk to them or if you want them to see it. Jordan, I have a question. Yeah. How do you decide whether you want to send it Instagram or text? Um, Instagram is a separate app, so you'd go into the app and you would go into the direct messaging, which I can show you guys how to do, but, um, and that you would send something to someone, but texting you would just do it through the messages apps. But when, how do you decide if you want to text or it's on the Instagram? Um, it depends on like who you're talking to. Like if you're talking to somebody that has a, like an iPhone or um, somebody that you text frequently, then you might want to do it through texting, but if it's somebody that you don't have their phone number or something like that, then you might want to do it through Instagram. Yeah. Um, when you click on it, you can tell that somebody's tagging the picture because of the little face in the corner. And if you click on it, then it'll bring it'll uh, bring an arrow to the person, and it'll say their username. And if you click on that, it'll bring you directly to their account. If somebody's tagged in a comment, their username will be in blue. And if you click on that, it'll bring you to their account. But also, it notifies that person that somebody's talking to them. Any questions about Instagram? Yeah. So, do you, would you like, do you like to get text messages from adults or, or Instagram? Is that a good thing? Um, um, it depends on the person. Because like for me, it doesn't really make much of a difference. But I know some people would be like more so, like they want it to be more friends based. But like Instagram is also a good way to like, you can, like if my grandpa, he has an Instagram account, so he can look at all my pictures and oh, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he can like like them and he can comment on them. But like not all my friends would know that he was looking at my pictures. Yeah? Uh, to follow up on this question, what I have read to too many old people <laughs> and relatives and you know part of this is you sharing your life with selected people right but uh, we were talking about that we were talking about that last night go on about the fact that it appears that in 
Instagram uh, was a way for Facebook to really own the teen business for the young, for the young, you know, the younger set from what, 12 to 15, 16? Yeah. And then keep them for Facebook at a later date. But it really got them into that market. Um, and that's what we, you were saying last night, right? Yeah. You can, um, it's actually, you have to create your own username. So, like, my username is um, jordan.kravitz. So, like, if you were to type into the search bar on Instagram, jordan.kravitz, it would bring you to my account. And um, I have, I gave Instagram my email, so if I forget my password or something, they can email me a way to switch it. But you can, and you can set your you can set it up so that you it has your phone number too, but I don't like that. And Instagram can also like when you first get an account, it'll show you the people that it thinks you should follow based on the people in your contacts that have Instagram, but it's not run through um, your contacts or your phone number. So you can get you can communicate through your username, your phone number. It like hooks it up to your phone. You can have it hook it up to your phone number. So like that, so it hooks up to your contacts because of your phone number and your email. But you don't, you don't like talk through your phone number or through your email. To, to answer your question before about kids moving off of Facebook, um, you have to realize that Facebook's privacy guidelines does not allow anybody who's under the age of 13 to technically have. Oh, I didn't know that. You, if you go to Facebook privacy settings, if you are under 13, 13 or younger, you are not to have a Facebook account. Did now, there are, many, there are many kids out there who parents have set it up for them. Uh, as Jordan's parent, she's 13 now, she could legally have one. Okay, she hasn't, you know, we haven't decided, yet, yay or nay on that. So Instagram didn't have an age restriction. Um, so it was, okay, here's a social network where uh, yes, as her parent, we are monitoring her, and, and we watch what comments and things are being said. Okay, I, I follow Jordan, I, I see what friends she has, and know what, you know, you know what comments are being said back and forth. Um, so that's where you see the younger generation who are very photo-based, take a picture of this and send it out to their friends, have the ability to communicate much better. So, like Facebook, Instagram, you have to accept somebody as a follower. Correct. If you're like private. Friend, if, if you're private. Mm -hmm. Do you have a problem knowing that your father's watching you? Uh, no. I mean, he used to be logged into my account on his iPad. And her mother reads all of her texts, so she, she has no problem. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last piece is FaceTime. FaceTime is it's like phone calls, but it's face-to-face, -face, so you can hear and see each other. It can be done um, on any Apple device, so if you're talking to somebody that doesn't have a phone yet, but they have an iPod Touch or an iPad, or they could use one of their parents' computers or something, then that's a good way to do it. Um, teens use FaceTime over regular calls for that reason, and because it's more fun. Because why would you talk to somebody over the phone if you could see them too? Um, so there's a picture of me FaceTiming my little sister, <laughs> and um, that's um, that's what the app is. Didn't you say to me once that texting was more romantic? No. <laughs> <laughs>
having to sit there when the grandparents are saying stupid things. I mean, I, I try to figure out, it seems to me it's less intrusive to a granddaughter that we're trying to reach out. If we text her, because then she can, it doesn't interrupt her life. I'd love her to FaceTime with us, but it feels like it, it, when I read her face or her body, it's a chore to FaceTime with us. She does it, but it's not fun. Her friends, yeah, she'll face stuff. But I'm just trying to figure out, because I love that your grandfather came up with this idea, and maybe you helped him, of course, and you did all the work, <laughs> but how to, when you're spread a thousand miles away, how to connect with a 12-year-old who's got a, her own busy life in a nice way that makes the conversations continue, rather than just birthday holidays or right. so I definitely recommend starting off with texting because it's just it's simple and it's easy and it doesn't like if you texted if he texted me while I was um at school one day I didn't have to respond to him right then and there I could wait till I got home from school to text him so it doesn't like have like an exact time limit um and I would like slowly transition into FaceTime like when the kid or like the teen like that's what they want to do because I know that like I would FaceTime him like it doesn't really make a difference to me um but you've been doing it forever <laughs> and like when my dad's on business trips we will FaceTime him but I, I definitely understand what you're saying I also think that sometimes teens are underestimated where people think of us as these like people we, like we don't not all teens lock themselves up in basements and play video games all day. I mean, I could name any who do, but not everybody. So, not all teens hate the idea of talking to family either. So, kind of like wait till a kid is ready though, but make, and I'm sure that there's a lot of kids out there who actually would appreciate talking to family. Yeah? Um, I have several grandsons and they're past teen years now, they're a little older, and I used to communicate with I found that they don't read their email anymore. I don't remember. They, so, the, how many emails <laughs> so, the only, <laughs> so the only way that I can really make sure, and sometimes I can phone them and leave a message. Occasionally, they might listen to their message. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, texting is the only way that I can. It's the best way. Well, no, I wish, I've, been, I've been emailing for months. Jordan for months. <laughs> and the same thing with my 11-year-old uh, grandson, Leo, and I get no response. But when I text him, uh, I get an instant response. And it, it, it's really frustrating because uh, they really do not do, not do a read email. Sometimes I text them to say, please read your email. <laughs> <laughs> T 
Oh yeah, the BRB will be right back. Um, one of the other cool things about FaceTime is that you can switch the camera direction. So, like from front to back. So, if I was talking to my friend Tessa and I wanted to tell her that my sister was wearing an awesome, really cool dress today, I could click that button and flip it around so she could see the adorable dress that my sister was wearing. Um, you can also pause FaceTime by pressing the home button. So if I wanted to hang out with my friend on the same day I had an orthodontist appointment, I could pause the FaceTime and check my calendar to see when the appointment is. When FaceTime is paused, you can still talk. And to return to the FaceTime, you would click the green bar at the top of your screen. Um, my best friend moved to the other side of the world at the beginning of this month. I had absolutely no idea how I was going to survive three months without her. Thanks to FaceTime, not only can I communicate with her, but I can hear her and see her. FaceTime makes it feel like even though she's 6,010 miles away, she really isn't that far at all. Um, and that's a picture of me FaceTiming my best friend Riley while she's in Israel. So, any questions? So, George, how often do you use FaceTime with your, with your friends during homework? Um, I use it a lot for homework help if I have questions. Um, I either do texting or I do um, FaceTiming because I, if I'm doing texting, though, I'll send them the pictures of my, the problem. <coughs> but um, we normally do FaceTime because they can, like, it's like tutoring over the phone pretty much, so they can see and they can show me how to solve problems. And, I mean, these kids are, it's, it's second nature to them to use these tools on a one-to-one. Hey, I, it's here, my friend's at home, they're not going to the phone, they're, they're on their laptop or their either device, they're quickly, I got a question on this problem. And, and they're having a conversation back and forth. So it's, with, with, with teenagers and <clears throat> even my five-year-old, uh, it's, it's second nature to them to use these devices and these tools where, you know, I, I almost want to take away the minutes that are on her cell phone, because I she probably uses less than right. 20 in, in a month, um, because she's using all the other tools that are on those devices. It's just, it's in their, it's in their nature. I mean, it's just how they are. Email is, is a thing of the past for them. Um, it really is. They do not, um, you know, I multiple times have said to her, hey, did you check your email? No, somebody sent you this, you see it, no. And know that it's not there. Even though it could say, read me, it could say, it's going to blow up, it's going to go. Where's the age break for that? 16, 18, you know what? 14? I, I, I don't really think there is a bright age. It's just, you know what, as technology continues to grow, um, it makes it, accessibility is easier. Maybe when they get into work, yeah. because at work you have to use your yeah. email. So maybe that's when the transition yeah. starts to email. I mean, I still think there's still, I mean, yeah, I think you get into work or college where they're starting to have to, hey, professors are emailing them assignments and things are going with that. But, but now with, uh, with yeah. now you've got the educational system posting things up to to, to, uh, to sites. So I think, I think what I'm trying to is probably more so um, work related because that's when they really stuck into going in there. Um, at what age did Jordan get her? <laughs> so, I got my first phone at the beginning of sixth grade, so last school year. No, seventh grade, last school year. And the, re the main reason I got my phone is because I was, or I lived back when you go into middle school, and I would be walking home from school every day, for it's like a 10 minute walk, with a couple of my friends, but like still, middle schoolers all the same. So, it was just like first thing. So you would come home alone? Yeah, I was, when I was got home, I'd be home alone.
Instagram is blocked. You can't use it. But most of you don't get on the school Wi-Fi. So um, <laughs> there's also um, because if you're on the school Wi-Fi, they can look at everything you're doing. So um, there's I mean some teachers also let you use your phones in class. If it's a calculator, if you have a book on your phone, because I read books on my phone. A lot of a lot of us do. So a lot of teachers let you. Um, do things like that. We do, there is no texting in class. How does, it, how does a teacher determine whether you're, unless they're watching your thumb? Um, a lot of teachers have rules where like, unless you are reading a book, if you're reading a book, your phone has to be flat down on the table. Uh, you can see it. Um, okay. If you're not reading a book and you're not on your phone, your phone has to be face down on the table turned off. Got it. Is what a lot of the teachers will do. I mean, because there's a rule no texting in class, does not mean that texting in class doesn't happen. Correct. Right. Because it does. It's like there's no notes in class, right? Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, pass notes. But, that's all, but um, the main time that texting happens is during our fourth hour because that's when lunch is. So a lot of people at lunch will text people in class. And that's a problem. If you, if, if you are caught texting in class, your phone does get taken away and a parent has to come to school to come get it. And the amount of parents who tell the school to keep the phones is more than the parents who actually come and get the phones. So you're in eighth grade now? Mm -hmm. When you got your phone in seventh grade, were there kids without phones? Yes. A few. I was the last of my friends. Out of my group of friends, I was the very last one to get a phone. Did you have a touch before? I had an iPod touch, but I wasn't allowed to bring that to school. So oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I made sure, every day, I made sure my parents knew that I was the only one that didn't have a phone. <laughs> <laughs> every day. She's a deprived child. Uh, I mean, my iPad mini was not enough. I needed the phone. Okay, so. You were still on the bottom on that diaper. Uh, for sure. Um, Do you think your yeah. sister, uh, Sarah, will have the strict rules you had? I think it'll be a little bit different by the time she gets her phone. I wouldn't be surprised if she gets her phone at a different age than when I get my phone. Like my parents keep joking. When she was in preschool, they used to say, oh yeah, by kindergarten, Sarah will have her own iPhone. Okay. And she'll have it. Um, she doesn't. Thank God. Um, <laughs> she does have an iPod Touch, though, and an iPad. So, oh, okay. It's a hand me down. So, I mean, I definitely think the rules will be different when she gets it, when she gets it because the world is just going to, it's going to keep changing and it's going to, uh, well, it's electronics are going to be like a bigger part of education okay. is much more electronically based. Mm -hmm. Jordan does all of her presentations. They don't go to the library anymore. They do all of their schoolwork. A lot of their presentations are on, it's not PowerPoint, what do people do? Anmodo. Anmodo, and then Edmodo, all of her assignments are listed online. It's like a, It looks like Facebook, but it's not, and the teacher controls everything. So they need technology for school now. It's an important part of school. Yeah. Why are kids so absorbed in selfies? Um, <laughs> I think the main reason teens are obsessed with selfies is because teens are obsessed with themselves. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. I mean, so it's the same reason why adults are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think kids are more obsessed with them than adults because kids are more comfortable just, you know, taking pictures of themselves but, all, all day. But how many people here used to have a Polaroid and take pictures? You we always take pictures of ourselves. We just never got them right away. And you'd hope it came out. Oh, look, I took that picture of myself. My head was cut off. You know, at least with, their, with, with them, oh, it's not a good picture of me. Let me delete it and take another yeah. one. Yeah. Um, well, like, let's take 10,000 and see which one looks yeah, good. see which one's the best. But I mean, it, it's funny that the word selfies become her generation's word. I know when I was a kid, I took pictures of myself with my friends. We used to go to the photo. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah, you make it funny yeah. and you hope it came out well. Like that. So at least with them, they get that instant gratification of, wait, all right, let me take 500 more. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Can you demonstrate that educational apps that you mentioned? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Okay. So there's just one more thing. I want to like sum up everything before we do like the representations and everything. So <laughs> texting is a fast, easy, and fun way to communicate that most kids and teens are extremely comfortable. Instagram is a fun way to share what you are doing and see what your friends and family are up to. And FaceTime is a simple and fun way to communicate. 
even if you're thousands of miles apart, you can still hear and see each other. Oh, okay, so you were, you're using one of the apps that you mentioned. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. No, it's okay. Okay, so. So it's like keynote. Yeah. That was, um, I actually used PowerPoint for that project. My grandfather is famous. Yeah, maybe you can find anything. Yeah, I don't know what that. I saw that. Yeah, I was like, I don't know what that is. He's famous. I don't think there's an application on a computer now. Okay. Okay. So you don't mind if I'm just gonna um. Tell my friend Riley that to FaceTime me when she's ready. Because my friend Riley, who's in Israel right now, we're actually going to do a live FaceTime with her and her twin brother. And we're not using iMessage because the cost with her in Israel is just free. Um, but they will FaceTime. What's the time difference in Israel? Seven hours. We're seven hours ahead of us. Okay. That doesn't stop them. <laughs> but isn't this the last day of Hanukkah? Yeah. It doesn't matter? No. Okay. <laughs> no, I get up at 6.30 and I hear them FaceTiming each other. Okay. <laughs> it's a little much. Okay, so <laughs> the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, if my friend don't respond, we're going to have a text conversation with my friend Anna. Maybe. Mm. It's not that day. Okay. What time is it there? It's, she's in Michigan, so it's the same time. We're going to do Instagram first, then. Um, Nobody's answering? Oh, Anna's wasn't sending, and Riley just got hers. Okay, so great example of selfies. Um, <laughs> that's my friend Maddie. So this is a good example. So the best way to like a picture, there's two ways to like pictures on Instagram. You can double click on the photo, or you can come down here and press the little like button. You can see instantly it's letting the person know. Again, with Instagram, it's, it's all about, for the kids, it's all about the number of likes. So if they post a picture, they're trying to get people to, you know, just, hey, look at me. Okay, look, I've got 17 likes. Um, you know, I'll, I'll hear from Jordan often. Uh, hey, my picture's been posted for 15 minutes, and 40 people have already liked it. Okay. You know, I have a friend who's obsessed with likes. She, um, she, she's really pretty and everything, but if she does not get at least 100 likes on the picture within the first hour, she will delete it. Oh, wow. I have never gotten all your likes on a picture, but she, it matters to her. So they say that it's actually an issue with Instagram and kids that they don't they're judging their popularity based on the amount of likes they're getting. Um, so this is right here. Um, I'm it, when you open the app, it brings you to the home, which is this little house right here. And it's the feed, and it'll show you all the um, most recent pictures that your that your friends have posted, or the, the people you're following have posted. Um, <laughs> lots of selfies. All the friends ones are selfies. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is the direct messaging box right up there, and I don't have any new direct messages. But I do have a comment on one. So we're not going to look at that one. Um, see. For one of my friends at camp, I was sending her a picture of something. It was the Girl Scout cookie sheet my sister brought home. And we were talking about the kind of Girl Scout cookies they were selling. And it's cool. You can just like have one on one. I don't actually have her phone number. So it was cool to have coming in conversation with her just from one picture. To um, search people on Instagram, you click the search bar right there. And it'll bring you to the people that they think you should follow based on the accounts that you follow and the pictures that you've liked. And you can search your account. So, um, I'm going to search my friend Riley's account. And you can tell that I'm following her because there's the green bar up there. And you can look through her pictures. An example, I was telling you guys about being, people being tagged in pictures. Here's a picture of her and her brother. And you can tell that somebody's tagged because when you open the picture, there's the little icon in the corner. And if you click on the picture, 
it'll um, bring up Jonah's username. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to take me right to his account. It's a cool feature. Um, she was my friend Maddie, and right here, she was talking to my friend Zoe. And Zoe must have gotten notified that Maddie was talking to her because she tagged her in the comments. Um, in order to post pictures, you click in the blue one in the middle, and you can take a picture, or you can look through some of your old pictures, like, there's a picture of me and my sister. So if I wanted to post this picture on Instagram, I would click that one, um, I would click next, and then I could put filters on it, you know, teens are obsessed with filters because they look perfect in all of their pictures. When want somebody seeing a bad picture of you. Um, and you can like edit it, you can adjust the lighting and everything. You can pretty much make it so there's nothing you don't like about this picture. <laughs> if you look up someone that you think is on Instagram, yeah, and where where is it that you uh, ask to follow them? Okay, that's a great question. And how do you search to find them? So, um, I would say I'm going to search, okay, I'm going to search my friend Rachel, and I am following Rachel, because Rachel likes my Instagram, okay, we're getting my friend Rosie, so, um, I made it so I'm not following Rosie anymore. And Rosie is in private. Oh, yes, she is. Okay. Yeah, this so, would be someone who's probably in private. So, Rosie, she's private. Okay? So, let's say I wanted to see if Rosie had an Instagram. So, I searched her up because um, I asked her for her Instagram ahead of time, or I got it from one of my friends, or I simply typed in her name. And it brings me to her Instagram. And I can't see any of her pictures yet because she's private. But if I click this bar, so I have requested her, and she can approve me to follow her. So until she says that it's okay for me to follow her, then um, I won't see her pictures. And on her account, it's going to look like this. She's going to get like something like this, or like a follow request. And she can click on it. And I don't know who this person is, so I'm not going to let them follow me. But um. I'm assuming she's going to let me follow her again. She would, <laughs> she would probably click the check mark, and I'll get to see her pictures again. If you don't know if they have an account, you can type in their name, and then you kind of got to look for a little picture to figure out if they have an account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do, do more teens not put their full name? So I would have, you know, I mean... Most teens do put their full name, and they're... Um, Instagram accounts because I don't know. It used to be that you'd put your first name, but right now I guess like the in thing. People change their usernames all the time. Well, they do. They okay. do. You change them, and I can show you guys how you would do that. But when I got Instagram, the the thing was you just have your first name and like your last initial. That's what I thought. Time. Or yeah. Because like in our presentation, for one of the pictures I posted, my account name was Jordan 3K. Yeah. But now it's Jordan Kravitz. Are those accounts linked, or you have to know which account is so linked. active? They're linked. Oh, okay. It's the same account. Why do they keep their account? Whatever it is for the day. Like, if everybody suddenly has their first and last name in their, in their account, is in their username, then people switch their account. But if it's just your first name that's in at the time, then they just have their first name. It's just what kids do, I guess. So. If I wanted to post this picture of me and my friend Anna, it's a really bad picture, but that's okay. Oh, my friend Anna just texted me. So, this is Anna. Um, hi, Anna. So, I'm going to send a picture to Anna. I'm going to send that picture. And I'm going to add a comment. Okay. And I'm going to say, found, oh, found this. And I'm going to put a smiley face. Okay, and we're going to see what Anna says. It's going to take a long time to send. Do you ever use the dictation? 
for entry text? Um, I do a lot when I'm like sending long things or like I'm doing something, but I'm also texting, and I don't want to like type it all out. I use the dictation a lot. Okay. So back to Instagram until Anna responds. So once I was happy with how the picture turned out and I was done editing it and everything, I would click next, and I could write a caption. So I'm gonna say. but you can put the location of where you are and I can show you guys what that'll look like afterwards but I don't like people knowing where I am so it's not something I like to do and then I would click share and I don't actually want to post this picture because it's not a very good picture but it would show up in, the, in other people's feeds and they could like it um, in order to see who liked your picture and things like that you would click on the little bubble with the hearts inside there and it would, this is where I was when I left the person or I told the person that they couldn't follow me and it shows me who liked my pictures and like who commented on my pictures and things like that so and then in order to look at your own account you would click on the little person so these are my this is my account so there's my profile picture of me and my friend Riley <coughs> and then these are all the pictures that I've posted um, there's two ways you can look at them. You can look at them like a grid by clicking. It opens like this, and it's because the little black boxes are blue. But if I wanted to look at like, and like once it's in grid, you can click on the pictures, and then it'll open that picture. But you can only see one picture at a time. So like I posted this picture for my friend's birthday yesterday. But if I wanted to be able to look at more than one picture. I would hit the lines, and it makes it so I can scroll through all my pictures. And right here, right underneath the picture, it'll tell you how many likes you have. And then underneath that, it'll show you the comments. So right up here in the gray is where you would put a location. So my location is in Surreal Place. I said like for a TBH. TBH stands for to be honest, and you would say like. To be honest, you're really pretty and nice, and we should talk more. That's the most common one. Um, or to be honest, you're my best friend. Things like that. So that's not actually a real place, but if you go to my friend Riley's account, you can, oh, I like that. photo. Hey, hey, that's actually you. Um, so, so, I liked it. Um, and I'm going to click. If you click on it, it would, um, since I have his tags in it, um, I can even say, I think it's a fine picture. So I'm going to let it show on my profile, and I can show you where you can look at those. But if I, did, if I hated the picture, I could say it's going to hide from my profile so that nobody else can see it unless they follow my dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll come back to the locations. But if you click on this little, this little, like, person in the box thing, She'll show all of the pictures I've been tagged in. See, it's that most recent one. And so these are, you can scroll through them. These are all the pictures that people have posted of me that they tagged me in. There could be other pictures of me that people didn't tag me in, but these are the ones that I was tagged in. <coughs> um, so, an example of a picture with a location, like a real location. Oh, yeah. Michigan right now. She does a little speech bubble with me, so she's texting me. Um, so Anna's in Michigan right now, and so even though we're on the other side of the country, we're instantly having a conversation. Like she's responding like that. Just like that. 
Sure. You forgot to add to a bunch of old people. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to send Anna the picture of me doing your presentation. So I'm just going to take a picture of this. And a lot of like your face. I'm going to send it to her. And then I'm going to see if my friend Riley has got the text yet. So, okay, so after we're done texting Anna, I'm going to, to FaceTime my friend. Jordan, how often do you or your friends use the new uh, the new voice, single voice messages at an hour day? Um, we don't use it very often, but like if somebody if you're having like an important conversation with somebody that you don't want anybody else to see, one of the a little thing some, something that a lot of people do is they'll like screenshot text messages. So I do know that if somebody doesn't want anybody else finding out about this, then they'll send the voice messages because you can't yes. screenshot a voice message. <laughs> oh, Anna. GTG means got to go. I'll talk to you later. Uh, yeah, what, what I would do is probably the safest thing. Uh, you can Google, uh, you know, text, you know, text shortcuts. Uh, there are plenty of sites out there that will. Give you the uh, the answer key uh, to some of the uh, uh, some of the shorthand that these kids use. So we uh, print it off and have it. Yeah, it. or at the same time, just copy it and do a Google search, and it'll come up quickly. Uh, there was one that we saw this morning that even Jordan didn't know uh, that, um, I see that that I somebody had sent back. We were like, huh? And, like somebody had posted, like, I, I, Jordan, what does this mean? And she didn't even know it. So I mean, some of these kids are making it up as they go along. A lot of the, a lot of times you're looking at it. It's the first initial of each of the words that they're trying to. Uh, it, it's just hey, how quickly can they get the words out in as few characters as possible? Yeah. I wanted to know if you uh, like to do this a lot. Uh, do you have any videos? Like trending videos? What videos? Yeah. yeah. Um, like like explaining all this stuff. Or <laughs> uh, just a short video that you want to send to somebody else. Oh yeah. Okay, I can send a video to my friend Anna. I mean, you can look. There's, I mean, the reply back is six, five letters. Okay, see ya. Okay. Yay! We're gonna record. And everybody, can say hi. Okay, ready? Hi. One, two, three. Hi, George. Hi. She is it turned on so that when she reads it, it'll say red.
how you start a conversation. And that one actually can do with like Anna and her twin sister. So Anna and Rachel. In group chats, though, it doesn't say if they if it's delivered or if they read it because there's multiple different things.
time is safe. See, I can still hear them. Like, what do you guys think I'm saying? Hi. Maybe. The Wi-Fi is bad. Yeah. Riley, are you still there? Maybe. Yeah. Hi. She got me. When I was pausing the FaceTime, they could still hear me, which is cool because like, if I wanted to check something, or she posted a picture on Instagram, and she said, hey, go check out my picture, then I could go see her picture um, while we were still talking, which is cool. Wait, so you pause, pause. Yeah, I'll pause it. Yeah, you guys pause. See, when, you, when they're paused, it'll say pause on my screen. Okay. So I know that it's paused. I know that she's not there. But I, she can, I can still hear her. Hi. Can you still hear me? I can. Okay, perfect. Thank you guys so much. I'll talk to you later. Bye. 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 I'm not sure how to how to ask you this, and maybe your parents can chime in. Chime in. What about unwanted and unsolicited texts or Instagram? I mean, are there controls? I'm not familiar that familiar with either of those. Yeah, um, you said Jordan had it on there. The way since her account set up is private, which I would have had her do. She did it on her own anyways. Um, if people can't see. It has to be a mutual request for anyone to see her profile. Um, her name can come up there as people saying, hey, I want to follow this person. She had, she had shown the example there was somebody who asked to request to follow her that she didn't know. Okay, so she's asking now, no, I don't want that person to follow me. Um, <coughs> there's really no restriction that you can put on it to stop that from happening. The request can still be made, but because she has her account set up as private, that person's not seeing anything unless Jordan agrees to allow that person to, to follow her. What, so, happens if, what happens if you agree and then maybe later you have some sort of a falling out? Then you what, can block then what do you do? You can block somebody. In, in, in both texting and in you can You can block a number on texting. Yep. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Is Skype now obsolete? Skype is, um, my Riley, she, um, for family members that didn't have iPads, um, or iPods or anything like that. They had to get Skype so, like, so they could talk to their grandma. But FaceTime is kind of like taking over. So for data, I thought if you both had a Mac hmm. and FaceTime, there was no data charge. As long as you're on Wi-Fi. If you're on Wi-Fi, yeah. On wi as long as you're on a Wi-Fi connection, there's no charge at all. But if they're, you know, if she's out in the middle of, right. of town, right. like Riley was, she's, she's pulling off data and she's on a Wi-Fi <laughs> Cyberbullying a big deal with you and your friends? Um, I I had an experience of it wasn't extremely major, but I was cyberbullied over texting. Cyberbullying? You know what? Cyberbullied over Insulted, texting? Like yeah, like somebody it, took my friend's phone and started texting me, not my friends. Um, but we actually my school kind of got involved and they dealt with that. But. Um, I would say cyberbullying happens more over Instagram, and not entirely like on Instagram, but if you can see, see I'm going to go into here, where I have those 76 days, it's not an actual website, it's actually the number of days until Riley comes back home, but um, you can put real websites in there, like if you go to Riley's. Um, she has a website to their blog. Okay, so I can't actually do that. Okay, yeah. So that's their blog mm -hmm. for Mother Israel. Um, oh. Skype text. Well, it's from Riley. So why is he texting? It doesn't look up funny. Oh, that's that's her mom. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> website and their bio and the link people have who has one um, 
there's like this web website. It's called Ask FM. I never that one. Um, and this girl, I know that she doesn't have um, anything for bullying on here, but it's, it's Ask FM is a website where you can anonymously ask questions, and the person answers them, and they're put on the web for anybody to see. So people don't always really ask questions, but they'll say things like, hey, or like you seem like you're really nice and pretty. Like those are nice things, but people don't always say very nice things. So if they respond to that, then anybody can see it. But even if the person doesn't respond to it, they still see it, like the person sees it, and the damage is still done. So I don't have one. And it's not like directly run through Instagram, but Instagram that kind of connects the dots so people can do it. Yeah. Is Robin have to set up with any type of local provider when she's over there? She does have um, a phone number from Israel. So that's what I FaceTime her to. Okay. So when, when did you learn about the dangers of this? Was this at school or through your parents? Um, I, learned about your friends? I learned about it somewhat through my parents, and then um, my friend last year, she had an experience, my friend Tessa, had an experience with cyberbullying over texting, so I learned a lot through her, but then also in our health class at school, we do a whole section on things that can go wrong over the internet. These kids are learning that all because they deleted it, once it's out there, it's not going away. So the, the, the schools, at least in our area, are doing a very good job of helping educate with the kids in regards to, you know, when you're saying things and, and when not to. That all because you, you know, I sent it to Jordan and I deleted it, it it's, it's out there. Somebody can recover that at some point in time. Be very cautious. It, it, it is, as a parent, um, it, it, Internet's a wonderful place and a lot of great things, but just remember that there's also a lot of places that you're going to run into. Uh, and that's one of the chief reasons that you know my wife and I made the decision that Jordan wasn't to have a Facebook account. Uh, you know, even as all of her friends, as you know, Jordan said earlier, she was the last of her friends to have a phone, the last of this. Uh, you know, there are many of her friends that I know have Facebook accounts. Okay, so they're violating Facebook's rules. Okay. Uh, you know, when Jordan came to us and said, can I get an Instagram account? You know, we thought about it. We wanted to make sure that it would be in an environment that was, you know, safe, that it was, you know, peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, you know, uh, if she approaches me today and after this says, hey, Dad, I'm 13, do I get my Facebook? You know, we'll have a conversation. I don't know if it's the right place. And I don't know, like you, the you know, questions earlier, is it really the place where kids want to be right now? I mean, I'm, I'm in the interactive uh, digital space, and... You know, I, I've been on Facebook almost, you know, as soon as it, I, I remember the day that I jumped on Facebook. And the first question my, my wife asked me was, what are you doing stalking your exes or trying to talk to people, younger people? And that's what it was. Now it's dominated by the brands. I remember uh, my, um, my cousin Kaylee had asked him, um, how come he doesn't have Facebook? And he said, because he doesn't have it. And then he said, question that I didn't get to answer before about the kids that are getting headaches and things like that. With their phones, I personally, I didn't get a, I don't get a headaches from like being on my phone. Like in the car, I get car sick and things like that. But when um, iOS 7 came out, I did get headaches from the, um, the parallax. That give kids, like kids got, I know a lot of my friends got their headaches from like the, the background shifting as they move their phone. But I haven't actually gotten headaches from like using my phone while I was in the car. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, you said that, that Skype is no longer used. It's not popular. It's anymore. not as big anymore. Uh, but can you can you FaceTime someone on PC? Mm -mm. Which is like that's the main use for Skype now. Like Riley had to get one because for her older family members, like who didn't have Apple devices, for her um, for her grandma, she had to get. You talked about your work as your book editor. Mm -hmm. Do you use any of these apps that you described in the 
in your productivity, in your real work, that's your book, and how do you do it? This is the Tuffle Year at the Town Hall. So we do have an Instagram, and it used to be run by Riley, but now it's run by um, now it's run by my friend Maddie. And we had to specify in the little bio on Instagram that it is run by Dumbledore students because people used to say, "No, I am not following this. I'm not letting our principal stalk me." No. So we specified that it was run by students. Um, like we posted pictures, like we posted a picture like this in front of DC, like showing how fun it was, and we were saying. Um, Hey, if you have any pictures from Washington, D.C., send them to us and we can get a chance to have them in the yearbook. Okay, or like little groups, like promoting little pictures, because kids want their pictures in the book, but we can't put every picture in the book. And like my friend Riley would do things like this, and she would take pictures, and then she would tag the people's accounts, because people didn't always know about the Dunkle Yearbook, but if she tags them, then they're like brought to the account and like, oh, this is sounds like a cool account. I'll follow them. And it kind of like promotes the yearbook and like shows them like the cool pictures that we use and the cool things that we're doing. So yeah. But you know, as you mix, um, we definitely use Instagram all the time. Like for DC, um, we we have our own Gmail and so we were saying you can um we made our own hashtag too. It didn't end up being used, but like we said, Dunkel um, O E D and D so we said, if you have any DC pictures, you can um, post them and use the hashtag OED in DC, and we'll, we can see if we can put them in the yearbook. Or you can direct message them to us because we use it to get pictures from the kids too. Okay. Yeah. Real quick, do you try to use the term time manager? Do you limit yourself to the use of the iPhone? Yes. <laughs> do you oh, limit yourself? You do? No, she does. <laughs> no, she does not. That has been a big issue. I do feel like the phone has affected school a little bit. So it's been a challenge. Instagram, you could spend 12 hours a day on it. Well, she could. I could spend three minutes a day. Um, so that's been a big struggle for us, trying to limit the amount of Instagram, the amount of texting, the amount of FaceTiming. It's been a struggle. But okay. we have finally gotten through it. Yeah. So my kids, you know, my grandchildren, we, we always said, well, what do they do outside? Do they ever go play outside? Or sports, or do something where they're not communicating with the phone. So well, and that's an issue because if you text somebody and they don't respond right away, like if she's waiting to do homework, her friends will put their phone down when they get home, so she puts hers right down next to her. Mm -hmm. So I said you actually could call a home phone because they might answer, mm -hmm. but she would never leave that, nor would she have a number. So their numbers are on in our regular home phone, but if they don't respond right away, she assumes they're doing sports mm -hmm. or something else, and they're not. Gonna I don't know what your time is, but do you have time to talk about Twitter? I don't have a Twitter. I'm not allowed is to. It, is, it, is it passe or? You can talk about Twitter. Um, no, I think Twitter's a, a, something Jordan's never had, never, never shown interest in. Um, yeah, I, I, it's definitely not passe. Um, I think Twitter's the, probably one of the best sources of, of news information and breaking information faster than, than, than anything that's out there. Um, you know, her generation, I, I, you know, they're, they're more about the pictures, they're more about the self, uh, going from that. Like, how many of your friends have Twitter accounts? None, but, but um, at school, my, my teacher, he's my yearbook teacher, but he's also my social studies teacher, and even though we're learning about, like, the things that happened right after, um, right now, we're still learning right after American um, broke from the Brit broke from British power, um, he also thinks it's very important that we know about what's going on now. So um, when everything was going on because of like the African American man and the, um, with the shooting and everything, um, he would like every day he'd go on his Twitter and pull it up on the board. And he would show us like the the hashtag <coughs> for uh, everything that's going on. And he would like scroll through. So like he uses it in our learning to teach us. And like sometimes our homes would be like. Hey, if you were um, a congressman in this time period, what was the tweet that you would tweet out to everybody? Then you can only use like, a certain amount of characters because that's how it works on Twitter. So like he keeps things in like ways that we would understand. So yeah. From, from their standpoint, I just don't think it's a it, it's not passe. It, it's not a, <laughs> 
not a ready use communication device. I think the, the, the ones that they're using now, uh, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, Snapchat. Uh, uh, texting, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm on Twitter, I've been on Twitter almost since it started, and I've watched it evolve into just this craziness of just more so news information than what it was on a, you know, hey, I can send a quick message to somebody, or I've got people that, are, I've got something important to say, what, what, are, you, what are you trying to get across by messaging? Um, they're, they're not to that, and it doesn't mean that older kids aren't, you know, we'll see as, uh, you know, she gets into high school, if she starts to even want to use it more, uh, you know, but as of this now, I, you know, like I said, she knows none of her, I know none of her friends that have Twitter accounts or even talk about it. Um, I'm going to answer the next question. What is Snapchat? Um, Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> Snapchat, in my opinion, is the absolute worst app of all times. Oh, it's interesting. You um, had asked about cyberbullying. Okay, Snapchat. Snapchat, okay. Snapchat is an app where you can send pictures to somebody and they only have up to, I believe it's 10 seconds to look at the picture. And it goes away forever. Like you cannot see it again. Now, it does not go away forever. Like It's still out there. Um, so you can send you can send short videos too, and you can send it to select people. You can send it to everybody, but once you watch it once, it's gone. So, and if you if it's something like rude or inappropriate, you can screenshot it, but that person gets notified that you screenshotted it. And who so, did it? Yeah. Immediately. So that's not very helpful for you. It's so I I don't have Snapchat. Snapchat is. Not only is it the worst app out there, it's the most used. Everybody has a Snapchat. Everybody. Like, um, I was talking to a guy, and he was just like, before he asked me for my phone number, he asked me for my Snapchat. I'm just like, okay, I don't have one. So you have to give him the phone number. Oh, well, a couple days later, he asked for that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that, actually, that actually is the guy who, um, phone, whose friend took my phone and got me into the cyber. That didn't really work out. But um, Snapchat, it's just, I don't get why people enjoy sending pictures that you can never see again. That also puts people like, at risk of bullying. Mm -hmm. All set? Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.